I'd like to call to order the Cabarrus County Board of Education's work session and business meeting of Monday, July the 11th. Uh, at this time, I would like to have a moment of silence for the dedicated law enforcement officers that were killed in Dallas, Texas and other states this week, and also for the men that lost their life, the two men that lost their lives in these terrible tragedies. So if we could have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. And please keep these families and their loved ones in your prayers at this very difficult time. Thank you. Um, also, uh, I would like to have, uh, we would like to have the Pledge of Allegiance. And if Miss Ronnie Boone could come forward to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance at this time. And if you would stand. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And if you'll kind of bear with me, you'll notice that my voice is going to kind of go in and out. Uh, thanks to my granddaughter, she has shared her call with me. And uh, that's what granddaughters do. And so I'm, I'm kind of getting kind of hoarse tonight. So hopefully my voice will kind of uh, last for me. Um, okay, 3.1, we are at the point where we're going to adopt our agenda. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion right now for adoption of the agenda. Okay, Mr. Harrison, second by Mr. Phillips. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed? Okay, that unanimously passes, uh, six to zero. All right, uh, number uh, 4.1, uh, we have introduction of new teacher liaison to the board, uh, Glenda Jones. All right, thank you. Tonight we would like to welcome Emily Francis, our 2016-17 Teacher of the Year. Mrs. Francis will serve as the teacher liaison on the Cabarrus County Board of Education for the 2016-17 school year. Mrs. Francis began her career with Cabarrus County Schools in 2004 as a teacher assistant. This experience, combined with her personal experience moving to the United States, inspired her to become an ESL educator. Since 2004, Emily attended the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, and completed her Bachelor of Arts degree in Spanish, a graduate certificate in teaching ESL, as well as her Master's of Art in teaching ESL. In 2012, she began her teaching career at W.M. Irvin Elementary, where her dreams of becoming a teacher became a reality. As an ESL teacher, her primary goal, regardless of race, religion, or national origin, is to teach English to students whose dominant form of communication is in a language other than English. Not only does she teach her students, she also serves as liaison and advocate for her students and their families. In addition, she conducts workshops for teachers designed to help teachers close the cultural gap that exists between staff members and language learners. These workshops are designed to provide teachers with the appropriate tools to support ESL students. Emily finds that the rewards in teaching are countless. According to Emily, though students' academic success is our objective, our ultimate goal is to inspire our students to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. To see our students succeed in life is by far the greatest joy and reward any educator can have. Emily, we are looking forward to working with you on the Cabarrus County Board of Education this year, so we welcome you. Welcome, Emily, and we look forward to working with you and hearing your comments. Thank you. All right, uh, we're on item 5.1, and we have the school choice plan, and we have recommendations from, from Jason Van Neuclem. So, Jason, it's your turn.
Good evening, members of the board. Um, we've been talking about the school choice plan now since May, and uh, you already heard some of these proposals in June. I'm just going to review these real quickly and then um, use a one-page document here to kind of summarize that and then entertain any questions. Um, but for, for the public viewing audience, just kind of remind uh, folks what we talked about on June 30th, since that was not televised, um, some of the modifications to the plan. And really the only slide I'm going to highlight here is the four options that we presented to the board on June 30th, um, and our recommendation being option number three. And so just to review those options quickly um, for the middle school plan, option number one was uh, the plan is presented in June. Option number two was to add a hub stop to Northwest Cabarrus Middle School and C.C. Griffin Middle School so that no student would have to leave uh, Jan Freeze during their middle school years. They'd be able to stay at Jan Freeze um, if they started their next school year. Um, that would be a kind of a two-year window, so we'd have to pay that cost for two years and then we, that would go away. Then option three is a combination of continuing option number two, but also staggering the entry of the attendance zone for JN Freeze Magnet School. Basically, this gives the same um, benefit to those neighborhood students who are either at Hickory Ridge Middle School or at CC Griffin Middle School or wherever that attendance zone might be. Um, they could stay at their middle school throughout uh, the transition phase. So we'd phase them in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade over a three year period. And then option number four kind of circled all the way back to our original plan, um, which was to do both the staggering of entry for the attendance zone and the staggering of an exit for IB, um, so that the, the students that were at Jane Freeze in the IB program would also be able to stagger out um, of that IB program. So again, we presented that to you on June 30, had a healthy discussion there from uh, with the board, um, and again, our, our, our recommendation is option number three for reasons we previously discussed. I also want to share um, just a summary document here that highlights by school. So there's different ways to think about this, and again, we're simply voting on phase one, not phases two and three, but our original proposal had multiple phases. But here you can see a list by school of how this plan will affect individual schools, both elementary, middle, and high. Most of our conversation, in fact, I would say all of our conversation in the last two months is really focused on the middle school. That's the heavy lift. And that's the, the one that uh, affects the most students. Um, and, uh, but we, we do have in there some, two elementary programs, um, all the middle school programs, and then the high school STEM program at Northwest Cabarrus High School. So phase one, 2017, is what you would be voting on um, to approve for the school choice plan. At this time, I'll entertain any questions you may have. Okay. Uh, board members, I'll start to my left. Mr. Furr, do you have any questions? Anybody to my left? All right, to my right. All right, Mr. Walters. Yeah, we had some more information that had come to light based on some of my my questions from the last time. Can you go highlight some of that? I can address so, um, and, and Mr. Walter asked to, um, actually he made the point in the last meeting that he wanted to maintain as many students as possible in the pipeline and was concerned that some of the students, um, in particular in the elementary feeder area, in the Coltrane Web, and now McAllister and Beverly Hills area, you know, would be able to continue in the STEM pipeline for middle school. So he asked us um, just at the end of last week to investigate um, what it would take to have hub stops at those three schools. So in, in effect, and you tell me if, if, if I'm wrong, that a neighborhood student whose parent may not be able to take them to JN Freeze would be able to walk one block, two blocks, three blocks, whatever that would, because a majority of those students are neighborhood students. Um, and then get a hub bus that would take them to JM Freeze. And so uh, we did that called transportation at the end of last week, and their best estimation with that was about $50,000 would probably be a driver. Um, in the grand scheme of, of transportation, a pretty minimal cost to provide that. We also looked at, um, from those, the, the elementary feeder area, how many of those students are free and reduced lunch. And it was um, approximately 40%, 38% or so, about 140 students, which, which who's, I think Mr. Walter wanted to target in that group. So um, that's the answer. It, it's best guess is 50 or $60,000. Could be more than that, but that's probably a pretty safe guess from what we had from transportation and would provide a way for uh, neighborhood students in the elementary school to get to JM Freeze. 
if that was our goal to just keep kids in this pipeline, I think that's important that we need to consider that. All right, on my right side. Um, <clears throat> sure, I'll bring something up. Uh, there's been a suggestion raised by uh, um, a, a group from the J.N. Freeze um, staff that um, they would like to keep the program, the co current cohort, together um, rather than splitting them up into two schools. Um, have, have you considered that and, and whether that would be feasible uh, given how much space we have at the two um I'll answer that too because we kind of um, that was also something that Mr. Shoemaker asked us to look into. I think he met with a group um, of faculty at JM Freeze and asked us to investigate. So it sounds like um, so we have to put a lot of ifs on the table that um, the IB training that some of our people were at um, last week, right, last week or the week before, that some people ask, could you transfer the certification for IB to another school? And evidently during that meeting, they were told, yes, you can. If two thirds of the faculty is in place, it can move the certification over. And so um, it sounds like that was an, an answer there. We asked some follow-up questions that, well, where can we find that in writing? Where can we find that on the website? Can we get you to send us that in an email? The answer from that was, uh, well, no, we kind of reserve the right to do that individually and look at every school and make sure we do it. So I think the answer to that was it's possible. It certainly may even be a good possibility. But we started at that point when we heard at the end of last week to try to email IB, to get an answer back from IB. Um, we call, And at this point, we do not have a set in stone that that can actually happen. But some pretty strong indicators that it could happen but it's almost like they have to come out and investigate that and make a determination and, and want the flexibility to say, well, we want to do that. Um, we want to have the ability to do that per school. The other thing that we were asked to look at was, so could we take a group of those students that would be as part of the cohort so teachers could stay together and also the group of students could stay together? And what would that look like? So we tried to analyze where the feeder students were coming from, where we thought that would best work. Our, if we were going to do that, our recommendation would be that that go to Concord Middle School because right now, Weddington to Winkler has a feeder area that gets bigger every year because they have an elementary school feeder. Um, if this plan goes through, then Concord Middle will also from Irvin, but that's not in place now. So if we were going to do it, we would recommend Concord Middle. We looked at the feasibility of that, and um, it's that's not very difficult to do except for the fact that you would have to put mobile units there probably for the two years that you have those students. So it would not put Concord Middle beyond their um, maximum students, but it would put it close to that just for those two years. So in essence, you'd put eight mobile units there, class graduates out, you could move four, next class graduates out, and then we're back and done um, for that to be able to work. So um, the cost for that would be the movement of the mobile units. We're going to be ordering mobile units quite a bit over the next four or five years, all indications are. So um, there's not a major expense there. When they were done, we would just move them somewhere else. The expense would be moving them in and moving them out. Um, cost twelve or $15,000 about to move. A, Tim's giving me the nod, so I think that's fairly accurate to move that in. So over those two years, it would probably cost about $100,000 to move them out. But Again, in the grand scheme of things, that's very doable um, if that's something that the board would choose to do. I think our recommendation still would be to divide them in half to, to start down that um, the path of what we're, is going to be the future. But um, as many board members said, well, what would this cost and is this doable? Could we keep them together? I think the answer is yes, we could keep them together. The cost is fairly minimal, again, if you're looking in the grand scheme of things. So it's very doable. Sometimes the answer is, no, we don't think we can do that. In this case, it is doable if that's something the board would like for us to do. Any other questions? To, just to pursue that a little bit further, maybe we should just delay this discussion until we have the, the vote. What, what, what do you think we should do, Madam Chairman? Uh, well, that, um, I mean, that they've got us that information. Uh, we can see some good points on, on both of them. One of the things is if all three, it was 350 students in that whole seventh and eighth grade class, correct? Yeah, one of the, the negatives about choice is that getting really hard numbers sometimes is hard because people can move in and out. But right now our best guess is between 350 and 400 students. We think that's a pretty safe bet. And that would open up those all those seats for STEM, which 
that would get us a bunch more for STEM. That's correct. Uh, yeah. Real quickly. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to open up that pipeline mm -hmm. a lot quicker. So get you know we're always saying we won't not have that wait list. So that that would be a plus right there. Plus we've heard people say. You know those teachers keeping those students and those teachers together again a good plus uh so that that's for the plus side on that yeah now just to clarify those under the original plan those students are going to move anyways uh, they're going to just be split between winkler and concord middle school so the 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 spots that are available for the um for the pipeline and for the waiting list will be the same under the under our proposal as well but you're right about the the arm in arm going together the the momentum if you will of keeping the, those those children together for for the two years would be um would be a, a good thing yeah but we're keeping them together along with their teachers because we're moving exactly. everybody right. i mean yeah. the, the whole group no, you're together right. yeah that's correct correct and so this, this, I mean, this is something different than what we're seeing right here. Is that correct? I mean, what we're, we're yeah, looking at. Yeah, under the this. current proposal, then you're splitting half teachers and half, half of the students. So you have 350 total, half the kids go one way, half the kids go another way, half the teachers go one way, half the teachers go another way. So you, 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 you dilute that effect, so to speak, by, by cutting it in half and sending them in two different directions. If you keep them all together, you have a little bit more momentum, a little bit more cohesion for that. And I'm, I'm just speaking for myself now. We haven't seen it in writing, but one thing that was kind of uh, had kind of sticking right here with me, uh, I, I hated possibly losing something we worked two and a half years to get certification, which I was actually on that little team when all those people come and gave me the third degree. Um, I really that didn't you know when i work to get something i don't know about the rest of you but when i work hard to get something i like to keep it and so when i heard that this proposal had been asked to be investigated and the possibility of keeping that i kind of like that idea but i'm only one member and i wanted to hear what we gathered on this and again i thought it was important to let our people our our, our public know that this is something that we are looking into and again I know you're all thinking what in the world are these people looking for but again we've been looking at your emails we've looked at your comments we've we've we, we're listening you know I know it's hard to believe but a board's listening to you and that's why we're trying to come up with the best solution that we possibly can so that's why these ideas keep when, when we hear you say something we're trying to see a solution or see what we can come up with to make sure that we are doing the very best we can for these students for your children so keep that in mind that we're not a bunch of lunatics sitting up here uh so we are really trying <laughs> that remains to be seen uh but we are really trying so when we we see something or we see one of your suggestions we are trying to see what we can do so any more questions under under the proposal of of splitting the ib as a group would the teachers be forced to go with that group or would they be given the choice of staying at freeze 